The correct answer is C. I added a, fig here, a figure here showing that the signal energy is stored in the electric and magnetic fields in between the two conductors. The electric fields are perpendicular to the magnetic fields, and both of those are also perpendicular to the direction of propagation, which is into the screen. Now, from last time, we want to come up with an equivalent circuit for a transmission line connecting a generator to a load. We want the equivalent circuit to account for the impact the transmission line may have on any propagating signals. If we blindly apply lumped element circuit theory to the scenario shown here, we would ignore the wires and directly connect the generator to the load. This is RG, VG, and the load RL. But this does not account for the electric and magnetic fields we know will exist between and around the two conductors. Well, what circuit element could we add that stores electric fields? You might be thinking of a capacitor. The electric field extends between the two conductors. So, let's draw a capacitor between the two conductors. I'll label this with C. And then we have RL. Now what about for the magnetic fields? There is current flowing along both the conductors, so there would be magnetic fields around each of the two conductors. We can draw an inductor along each of the wires, uh, but to simplify things, what is typically done is just one conductor is used to represent the total inductance for both conductors. C, L, oh, I forgot my, here's RG, VG, so this is our generator, and our equivalent circuit for the transmission line now has an inductor and a capacitor. Does this equivalent circuit represent a transmission line with the source generator in the cockpit and the load in the fuel tank? Well, we saw last time that at time t equals zero, the switch closes. The switch was right there. And the electric and magnetic fields start to travel down the transmission line at a finite speed, or at a speed less than the speed of light, or about the speed of light. But what we've drawn here is still a lumped element circuit diagram, and the signals would travel infinitely fast between the components. The signal would be everywhere instantaneously. How can we account for the finite travel time of the signals? Do we throw lumped element circuit theory from circuits class out the window and come up with something new?